Welcome once again to Action for Animals. Today, a much needed conversation, that of puppy mills. Now, what are they? Well, backyard breeders as we would know them and people looking to make money from their animals without thought or care for the animals. There are many negatives to this as well as abusive practices. And we're going to look at this awful practice, what it means for the animals you choose, and how it can hurt not only your heart, but also your pocket. To shed light on these and, and other insidious practices, we have with us today, vet and owner of Tropic Rottweilers, Dr. Tremaine Worrell. Welcome and bull mastiff breeder Bakari Bascom and his dog, his huge <laughs> dog, Logan. Logan um, is amazing and we will get to meet him in a little bit. Our Action for Animals colleague Gail had a chance to chat with Bakari before today's discussion. So let's listen in on their conversation. It's so nice to be here at your home, meeting Thank you your for coming. mastiffs. <laughs> How many do you have here? I have five here. Okay, then, yes. and you have how many males and how many females? One male and three females. Okay, then. And, and then a little rescue dog. A rescue dog yes, as well? Uh, Destiny. <laughs> you have to tell us about that in a minute. But who's this <laughs> lovely fella here? This is Blaze, okay. a four-year-old bull mastiff. Nice to meet you, Blaze. like giving this ball. <laughs> So, Blaise, one of the reasons that we're here today is to talk about dog breeding, and I know you are a breeder of bull mastiffs. So, in Barbados, and not just Barbados, all over the world, as a matter of fact, we have what we have called, named puppy mills, backyard breeders, people that want to breed dogs for money, people that don't spay and neuter their dogs, and the dogs are just perpetually, you know, having litter after litter. And there's a lot of... Um, animals that are suffering as a result being overbred um getting conditions that affect them because as a result of this overbreeding so as a breeder and um what we would consider an ethical responsible breeder can you tell us your thoughts about that please okay my thoughts on overbreeding and people breeding for money is that the only time a dog should be bred is if it's a healthy example of the breed uh, I don't think people should be crossbreeding dogs either. And because you're using Barbados as an example, which is a small population, you don't want to breed a female too many times. You don't want to have too many litters because that adds to the population. There's only so many people in Barbados that can care for a dog, certain breeds in terms of their health, feeding them, etc. Yeah. And you should try to limit how many puppies you put out there. You, you want to put the best ones for sure, and you should also limit the number because you don't want people's financial situations change, their lives change, people get divorces, people move countries, and it's hard to transport a, a, big, a big dog like this to some countries. Some people, when they move also, they don't have the same living space. They may have a house here, but when they go to Miami, for example, they may live in an apartment, a condo, yeah. that doesn't allow dogs. So as a breeder, you want to be able to know that your dogs, whatever you put out there, you can take back comfortably. We're going to continue with this very interesting topic of the ethics of dog breeding after the break.
On Action for Animals, we team up with the animal rights advocacy group Action for Animals Barbados and we seek to enlighten, to inform and just let you know the importance of proper and correct care for animals. Today, the ethics of dog breeding and we were listening in on Gail's conversation with Bakari. Like if I wanted to have one of your bull mastiff puppies, you wouldn't just let me have one just because you know you've met me on the street and I'm here. No, you're a breeder. No, we, what would be the process? The process. Uh, first, first question is why do you want a bull mastiff? Why, why this breed? Then after we go through the initial, I let you come meet the dogs, the initial interview process. Then I come to your home and I see where you're living, where the dog will be kept. Ah. Uh, in the interview, you get a lot of ideas from the people. You, 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 can, feel out, you can feel them out pretty well in the interview. Okay. And then uh, if I have a litter available or coming, then we can then talk about which puppy will be right for you in terms of temperament, in terms of if you want a male or female. Uh, then I also have contracts. So in my contract, I guarantee the health of the dog yeah. and the buyer or the new owner of the dog they guarantee that they're not going to breed my dog without my approval that they're not going to sell it to anyone else rehome it without my permission right they're going to care for it to the best of their ability yeah i return it if needed I return it if needed if <laughs> yeah if needed you return the dog and then i will find a new home for it because yeah. i think i am the custodian of this breed in barbados yes. one of the custodians and i want to make sure that the breed has an excellent reputation, yes. that they're healthy, that they go to good homes, that they're not abused, and that they don't end up in the shelters. Right. Thank you, Gail. And now we get an opportunity to go one-on-one, -on -one, or one-on-two, with Bakari <laughs> and, and Tremaine. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank Lots you know. to talk about, little time to do <laughs> it in. Um, if you could hear the, the pre-studio discussion, <laughs> um, it really was quite enlightening. Now. If I asked you what's the first and in most important thing you would like us to take away from today, mm -hmm. let's start with that. So as a vet mm -hmm. and as a dog breeder, what's mm -hmm. the ethics of dog breeding to you and what's the most important takeaway? Okay, so the ethics of dog breeding would be not to separate it with animal ownership. So everyone has responsibilities to animals, right? So the difference with a dog who, which was bred for our purpose is no different from a dog that's adopted or a dog that was bought. The point would be to responsibly do so. So when choosing an animal, especially one you're going to purchase, which is usually the case of acquiring a purebred dog, um, it is to realize that you not only have a responsibility in, doing, in educating yourself in what the breed is, a responsibility to investigating the breeder and actually knowing if they have the knowledge towards the breed and then making your choice based upon not only the looks of the dog, the health of the dog and the temperament of the dog. Okay, you, you made quite a few things in there. Mm -hmm. Responsibility is one of the takeaways that mm -hmm. immediately I get. And looking at Bakari and Logan, yeah. um, Bakari is a dog breeder. Mm -hmm. um, Logan has sired many litters. Mm -hmm. However, he looks like if he is a house dog, <laughs> a, a, you know, a pet, um, not a workhorse. Mm -hmm. the, wrong analogy and uh, different <laughs> animals, but you get what I mean. So, Bakari, what's your takeaway? Let's start with that first. The most important thing you would want anyone watching us at the moment to know, to take away. The most important thing for prospective dog owners is to make sure you get the right dog for you. Make sure you have the resources to take care of that dog and take care of it like how you would take care of something that you really love, whether it be a child or another person. It's, it's love that these dog, dogs need, these pets need. And it's not just something to make money off of. It's not an investment. Mm -hmm. It's not get a dog because you want a companion and get the dog breed that's suitable for your lifestyle mm -hmm. and what you want. That's something that we've touched on a lot here on Action for Animals. We're going to take a quick break, 
But when we come back, let's start with that then. The choice of owner and dog. How do you match the two together? What do you look for? The importance of what you're looking for? And yeah, when we come back. Today on Action for Animals, we're looking at the ethics of dog breeding. Now, what do what is ethics plural or, or singular? <laughs> I think it is a singular, but so, but so anyway, it's not ethic. So what does ethics look like? And we were talking about matching the correct breed with the owner. Mm -hmm. And what do we look for? Well, I can start. So when I, when I was, um, a child, I remember was watching Nat Geo and there was a show called Dogs with Jobs. That show was one of my favorite shows and that is what actually led me to realize dogs have different purposes, right? And that led me down a line of encyclopedias and that showed me, well, dogs have different lifestyles. Some are, some are sedentary, some are active, some require more grooming, some require less. So an owner has to figure out what their lifestyle is and if they would like to have an idea of the the dog the dog they they want um to let it be linked with the lifestyle so if you have a uh uh if you like jogging you may want a dog that can keep up with that if you you're in the office all the time you want a dog to just be a companion and you want a dog within that certain size the advantage of a purebred dog is simply that that you have an uh uh uh, direction to know that this dog should become something within this sphere. Now, obviously there are outliers, but then you know the dog is supposed to be approximately 100 pounds or, or 15 pounds, short here, long here, and this is the life, the, the, the prospective lifespan, and this is the prospective health issues as well. So you know immediately when you've done your homework mm -hmm. and you've asked your questions, done your research, you know your environment that you live in an apartment. Mm -hmm. So therefore you don't want a Neapolitan, yes. <laughs> which is going to take up the entire apartment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, in terms of its size. Um, if you're an older person, mm -hmm. you don't want an active dog that will have you running Definitely. after it. You want a more quiet, gentle mm -hmm. dog. Mm -hmm. So these are things you have to take into consideration. consideration. Why then a Rottweiler? Yeah. So for me personally, a Rottie was a decision. I like a dog that is versatile. Mm. So I, the number one thing is you must like the look of your dog. Right. And I always tell clients this, like whether you adopt a dog or you choose a dog, a specific breed, people have preferences. So even those who walk around the shelters and, and, and want to adopt, they usually say, I want something this size or a little shaggy or whatever the case is. I like the look of the dog. That's number one. In terms of the dog's activity, the dog is active. It can go on walks, it can go on hikes, it can, it can play. And I like dogs that tug, Rotties love to tug, right? Um, they love to toss the ball, but also they're not to the extreme spectrum of like a Belgian Malawa right. or, or one of those dogs. Whereas I would have to put in even more because that's outside of what I can offer right. i would always tell tell clients i They're love gorgeous, yeah i love though. belgian shepherds mm -hmm. yeah but it's not the dog for me right right and or i love a uh, neapolitan it's we not had the a dog dutch for me. shepherd in here yeah um, oh, nice. and i can i can understand so shepherds mm -hmm. are lovely mm -hmm. for me i have an issue with and again this is the mm -hmm. breed what mm -hmm. they've bred into mm -hmm. it is that hip dysplasia problem mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's, it's being bred out of the, mm -hmm. the, the breed now, but that, that mm -hmm. certainly from my shepherd I had mm -hmm. was, was really this. Well, it's, it's good distressed. you bring this up. Um, I don't know if Bakari wants to touch on this, but so the other thing is with, when you have certain breeds, you know certain issues. So with Rottweilers, it's like cancer. Yeah. It's one of those, one of those things that you, you kind of hope never happens. You do have dogs with elbow dysplasia and hip dysplasia. However, 
that is also the point of acquiring dogs because breeders are supposed to be health testing their dogs. You're not supposed to be getting a dog from someone who has no idea of what these dogs are the parents of this dog's hips are like the elbows or like that kind of thing. And responsible breeding gives you an indication of health. It doesn't secure you, but a lot of the issues you would actually see is more so from irresponsible right. breeding. Okay. Now, Bakari, time um, I'm, I'm noting is, is speeding by Weibo Mastiffs. Weibo Mastiff. I loved how they looked. I love that it's a dog that can be as placid as ever one minute. And when he needs to react, he's going to react. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they're very, uh, they're calm dogs. They're great with kids, great with family. And they can fit in the house and you not even know they're there until the postman comes. They're <laughs> or, huge. Yes. <laughs> so huge. It's, it's, like a, it's like a calm rock wheeler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very calm. And Logan's personality, we can tell. Yes. He's very zen. <laughs> um, he, he, he doesn't look it. No, you know, he doesn't look it, he but he, when he scary. needs to be, he can be very ferocious as well. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't need to be right now. So. Right. You brought up uh, off camera, um, I'm trying to remember your phrase. You said that bull mastiffs are guardians. Yes. Yes. So what's your dog's love language? Um, <laughs> Rotties or what? Rotties are the all-purpose working dogs. I oh. always call, I call them affectionately Rolls Royce of guardian breeds right so they're not going to be the fastest they're probably not the sturdiest but they're gonna they're kind of all all around now so they're working dogs they were bred to actually herd cattle oh but then but then further on in history they're using world wars so they have that versatility of movement wanting to chase very powerful very sturdy i have had my dogs well playing knock me off of my legs I'm sure. multiple times I'm sure. right so it does you have to understand it's that sort of power that they do have and this is what you have to look at mm -hmm. when when you're getting someone with a bad back yeah. you know um no, <laughs> no definitely no. <laughs> as much as you might like them yeah. no um jack russell's now mm -hmm. i call my little can of, of bug spray <laughs> um because she ferrets out all of mm -hmm. the insects and so on because mm -hmm. that's what the breed mm -hmm. is is was bred to do mm -hmm. ferret out rats and, yes. and and so on okay so therefore to be an ethical owner mm -hmm. not even just a dog mm -hmm. breeder critical you have to know the breed um that you get and bring into your home if not why well the the issue with not knowing the breed is that you don't know number one how to actually deal with the mind so you mentioned that you had a jack russell who is a ratter those dogs want to work as well so those dogs want something to actually chase and something to bite and kill let's, let's be <laughs> frank they want to kill rats they want to kill insects that kind of stuff um if you if this dog doesn't get the if, if she wouldn't get her 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 energy up you know sorry if you should get her frustrated energy down then you she's going to get frustrated and aggressive and aggressive then so you're going to have problems so instead of no getting her energy out on the 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 things to kill or, or things to chase and bite she's going to damage furniture she's going to damage property so you have to understand the mindset of your dog in in, in order to be responsible in ownership okay we're going to take a quick break one of the things that i've discovered and perhaps you need to spend time with the dogs that you want to choose is if they're shedders mm -hmm. you just very well might have allergies <laughs> so we'll be back in a bit take a look at something um, <laughs> Logan has come awake and this is something also that you have to take into consideration in terms of care 
because you have to be able to control the dog. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you know, someone has a dog that is in heat <laughs> and Logan is actually picking up the scent. Mm -hmm. So again, control, you know, <laughs> trying to make sure that you can keep him under control. And Bakari is quite, <laughs> quite good at doing that because he's had him all of his life. So let's take a look at these unethical <laughs> breeding practices. Um, what, what, what do they look like? What are they? You want to go, okay, yes. Bakari? So unethical breeding would be persons who are breeding dogs for money. Mm -hmm. uh, selling dogs to people who know they can't take care of them, who don't have the facilities, who have no interest in caring for the dog. They just want to breed for money. And also persons who would breed for colors, breed for head size instead of the overall health of the dog. How many breed for head size? <laughs> extreme, extreme dogs that they know are not going to live long, going to mm -hmm. have breathing problems because the muzzle is super short. Mm -hmm. All of that. Logan, come. sit. Hey, sit down. Sit. 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 Good boy. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> all of those are things that people, people who have dogs in unsafe conditions or unhealthy conditions those are people you don't want to typically spend your money with because there, there's, there's not going to be any recourse uh, when things don't work out people who sell this pot of gold that oh this dog is going to be this because the father is this and the mother is this there, no, no one really knows you can you can predict but you can try to predict but you don't know but you would hear someone say, but why it costs so much to get a purebred puppy? Mm -hmm. You know, or I can get this puppy, it's mm -hmm. purebred from mm -hmm. XYZ yeah. for much, much less. Yes. And the thing, the thing is, purebred doesn't mean well-bred. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need to understand because you want a purebred dog, that doesn't mean it's going to actually what that dog is supposed to, to, supposed to be in terms of the luck, the health, and the temperament of the dog. Um, so, so there, there, there's a certain, there's a certain caliber of dog that is going to expense even the owner of this dog. It takes a lot of work and money to even have a dog such as Logan. Um, therefore, if you want a well-bred dog from Bakari, then, you know, you have to give him some level of compensation. It's, um, that is, that is the, that is the thing. The other thing is, however, and this is what people don't understand. The money, the money is not what separates us and our puppies. So we actually intentionally, like, <laughs> it's all over the place. It, we actually only, I can say for myself, we own, I only do maximum one breeding a year, not one breeding of of each female right maximum one female a year and you keep a record a record everything in terms of the the pedigree of the dog which is the heritage of the dog parents grandparents great-grandparents is recorded everywhere those puppies go and also um, we don't keep all our puppies in the country that's a big thing we, we must export puppies because we don't want oh, to overpopulate Barbados that's why one of Logan's puppies yeah. is in mm -hmm. Jamaica mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sure he has puppies, multiple places. I have Trinidad, multiple puppies in Guyana. Trinidad, St. Lucia, um, St. Kitts, Grenada, you know, mm -hmm. all, all over, all over the world, pretty much. Um, and that is part of responsible breeding as well. You, you have to also be, just be mindful of the amount of puppies you're populating Barbados right. with. Right. And you also have records of not only the puppies, and, yeah. but their owners. The owners, yes. And the owners are screened extensively mm -hmm. as well, because we, our responsibility to, to ownership is to make sure that the owner is not getting something that they, that they can't, um, you know manage yes um so in screening a lot of people say I, I i seem like i'm trying to deter them and in ways i am because we don't want you to get a 12-year commitment if you can't manage it right you also take a look at you know what you're getting because mm -hmm. sometimes within a, a breed you can breed in something that creates so you were talking about the face mm -hmm. Of, right. of the, the the French bullies, right? So French bulldogs and many other breeds, and they're well-bred French bulldogs as well, and also those that are just purebred but not well-bred. So the 
they have what we call brachycephalic syndrome, which is pretty much the the mouth. shortening of the mouth, right? right? So those have implications in terms of health, in terms of how the dog actually goes about day to day. So you're gonna have one French Bulldog that if it walks to the mailbox, it is having a heat stroke. And you're gonna have another one that can go about and to go for walks and enjoy family time and that kind of stuff. Um, and those are just aspects that are bred into the dogs based upon what people fancied that would cause those physical signs. So one of the things you get is, is what we call stenotic nears, where the nostrils are squashed in. Um, you can get elongated soft palates, where the soft palate is actually long, and that causes the very stertorous, harsh breathing issues. And, and multiple aspects of, of the dog, even from just the shorting of the mouth, the dogs aren't made to breathe that way. Mm -hmm. So a responsible breeder- we've bred this We've bred general. this, yeah. So a responsible breeder would, mind, would be mindful of health. Yes, you like the look of this dog, but you also have to get the healthiest within that gene pool mm -hmm. and to continue on. Also, there are some breeds that cannot breed naturally and cannot pass puppies naturally. What do you, really? <laughs> yes, there are breeds that in, in Barbados as well, that every time they breed, a cesarean section has to be, has to be butt performed. Because they're too narrow, too small? Not, not necessarily only like the pelvic canal, but mm -hmm. also things such as, also, also things such as the, sometimes dogs genetically, they wouldn't push puppies on by themselves. They, the uterus would contract, he really woke up. Let's take a break. <laughs> we can just take a quick pause um, and give Bakari an opportunity to, to, to calm him down. <laughs> well, Bakari is back. He took Logan for a walk and um, he's breathing rather heavily. So I'm not sure if he's quite over his little moment. But perhaps this is a good time, gentlemen, to chat, chat about, and I'm going to ask and beg for extra time. Um, when you have intact uh, males, males and females, athletes. how does that affect behavior? And I know we hear with, with males about the testosterone and aggression mm. and so on. Um, but let's talk about that. And so perhaps so, as a dog breeder and then as the vet. One of the things you hear most about people with dogs, females and males, is that they don't have the space or they don't have the facilities to restrain them when necessary so when you have a, a dog you want to be able to put up your dog at times whether it be in the house or in a secure kennel at different times in the year mm -hmm. when other dogs are in season or when that dog is in season if it's a female so you prevent unwanted puppies mm -hmm. unwanted meetings your dogs forming packs and traveling behind a female i know you've seen it on the road where most definitely you know uh, all the dogs in the neighborhood are going crazy because the girl in the neighborhood, her milkshake has brought all the boys to the yard. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have the facilities to secure your dogs, that your dogs can't dig on the defense or jump over the fence or go through a hole in the fence to get to a situation where there's going to be re reproduction. Mm -hmm. And then someone has unwanted puppies, whether it be you or a neighbor or somebody at the road, because they, they, will, they will pick up the scent and travel pretty far to get to a female that's in heat. I've noticed. So, okay, now with Logan, mm -hmm. he's not actually in the room mm -hmm. with the female mm -hmm. that's in heat. It's, mm -hmm. as, it's as strong as the female mm -hmm. that's in heat rubbing up on her owner mm -hmm. and the owner wearing a caftan and bringing it into the room <laughs> and right. apologizing yes. yes yeah really yeah. i'm they really sorry noses, no, but, i didn't think about it but it's okay because we live with this every day so mm -hmm. we understand their mentality and that's part of a a breeder you have to understand as he said when males pick up that scent and especially proven males which is males have, who have done the deed before they turn on mm -hmm. like that and mm -hmm. say, okay, this is, this is my job right now. Now, that has problems, as he was saying, because then you have an issue now with males, that if you have two males, which most breeders would have multiple males, multiple females, two males, they could be best of friends, and that would change them into mortal yes. en enemies wow. until the females are out. So you have to be able to separate them. So, so, so this yeah. now calls to mind, again, when you're choosing, mm -hmm. um, some people like to get... Uh, you know, two, like a male and a female, mm -hmm. 
some like two females, mm -hmm. some like two males, mm -hmm. you know, um, and even more sometimes if they, mm -hmm. you know, there's a man and if you're you have shaking one dog, your, you have to separate and secure that dog. Whether mm -hmm. it's one dog, two dogs, ten dogs, you have mm -hmm. to be able to separate them because things can happen. Whether it be construction at the house, they might change the behavior of the dogs. Whether it be them being in season, whether it be a bone, you know, yeah. they, they, you need to be able to separate your dogs because it saves you money at the vet. Whether it be mm -hmm. a dog fight, cuts, mm -hmm. or or worse. And now you mentioned money at the vet. That's something we haven't touched on. Breeding dogs can be very expensive, and this is one thing that people need to understand. Breeding a dog, we talked about caesarean sections. Even in breeds that don't commonly get, it happens. They're expensive. Like, don't expect that because it's a dog, it's going to be cheap. Um, but caesarean sections would be one thing. Puppies also do get sick. We have a, a, a deadly virus called parvovirus in Barbados. Even before we get to that point, puppies need dewormer vaccinations. All expensive. Then. If these puppies get sick, you're talking about this can run you hundreds into thousands of dollars, depending on the size. If it's Some a, dogs have six to ten puppies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And sometimes we have owners where six puppies get ill and then they're wondering, what am I going to do? But you need to be responsible in breeding. A vet is not going to have remorse. They might have remorse for the dog. They don't have remorse for yeah. you because you chose to breed mm -hmm. this dog. It's a choice, right? Right, And you need to be responsible in making your choice okay. as a breeder. So much we've learned today. I have so much I've learned today. Um, and I certainly hope that you have as well. And, you know, just it all calls for planning and it calls for research of, of, as part of that planning. And as you can see, it's all about love as well. Um, Logan is a big, <laughs> beautiful, huggable dog, but he's also one who's really very strong. And so you may need, you know, someone who is strong in the household to look after a bull mastiff. Perhaps a smaller dog is for you. It all comes with research. And if you're going to be breeding dogs, again, you need to do the research. And you need to have the funds because mm -hmm. it can run you into thousands of dollars. And sometime. don't buy a dog because you want to make money. Please don't. Mm -hmm. Don't buy a dog because you want to make money, but because you love them. Thank you so much for joining us on Action for Animals. Um, perhaps if we do a season two or mm -hmm. part two, definitely need it. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Thank you.